$69 billion read, I think, and David Faber's going to come on and talk about it in terms of redemptions, not being able to get out. And I think that where there's smoke, there's fire. There's no question. Listen, the Fed has pretty much told you they want asset prices to go down. On the top of that list is real estate. And kudos to Dan, by the way, who I think in the spring, if memory serves, mm -hmm. when Blackstone was like 120, Jay-Z was here. Not that Jay-Z. Joe's Idol. Yes, of Blackstone. Dan pushed back on him in terms of exactly what we're seeing now in terms of real estate and how can we bullish in real estate in this environment. Now it's all coming to fruition. In terms of the stock, though, you have to ask yourself, is this news going to sort of signal a short-term bottom? I think it actually may. Oh, Dan. Uh, I mean, listen, just looking at the stock, I mean, it went took off, I mean, from 65. Mm -hmm. That was the pre-pandemic high. It was probably in late 2020 when a lot of stocks did after we had the election, after we had the vaccine news, and it went from 65 to like 150 in a straight line. I mean, this is, again, a financial company that, you know, is, I mean, it just made no sense, right? And we've seen this again and again. So just for me, the trader hat, I'm too dumb to understand a, most of their businesses. But when Joe Zidal was on here, he was talking the Blackstone book, but he wasn't really paying paying much service to the fact that with rates going higher, what it means for some of their key businesses, and I, that's what we did. So I suspect the stock will round trip back to 65, but and so it's not that far away at this point. I mean, we've talked again and again about what got inflated, what sort of benefited from free money, basically. And this is a major beneficiary of free money. The ability to buy up all this real estate at 0% interest rates, effectively. We start to reverse that, and we're seeing the other side of that at this point. Yeah, I mean, I think calling this the canary in the coal mine is a little silly. It's the ostrich in the coal Ooh. mine, right? We know that this has been going on for a long time. We've seen I got a visual on that, by the yeah. way. It's right. got a visual. It's crowded, yeah, I right? I mean, I'm tall. I'm yeah. tall. I like ostriches. I mean, I kind of look like one, so it's okay. But I, I think, look, we've known that this impact of free money has got to have some kind of catastrophic impact. And I think we're seeing that unwinding throughout the sectors. Blackstone, obviously, but there's multiple sectors that have benefited from it. It's going to spread to tech probably as well. Well, I think there's a combination of things going on here, and, and retail pressure on, in the REIT space has already been there. And if you look at also, just look at utilities, look at things that have been yield instruments, and these are terrible charts, folks. Uh, and let's get back to why people are investing in REITs. I, I don't think a lot of that has changed, despite what's going on with interest rates and the volatility and the pressure on, on real estate assets. If you think about low volatility, uh, fixed rate returns, the dynamics here, and if you think about uh, the run on these assets, this is not... You know, th this is not what's going on with CMOs and where we were back in 2008. But um, I do think you have a case here where these are illiquid assets. Um, and often, look, hedge funds will tell you that we're actually protecting you from yourself by putting a gate up because, in fact, we, we want to limit the amount of volatility in a portfolio. And so th that's really what's going on. By the way, this isn't just Blackstone. This is yeah. Starwood. This, yeah. is, this is CBRE. Um, this is BlackRock. And these are some of the biggest funds in the world, um, especially for wealthy and high net worth individuals. The underlying message, though, guys, that there's little faith in terms of the bounce back or any bounce back in the office space market, mm -hmm. in the commercial real estate market. Um, there's not little faith that rents will continue to rise at this rate. And so that's I mean, that's why people want their money back. They don't have that faith in the markets. That, that to me, is a huge signal huge. that people are not confident in this economy we're, whatsoever. We're coming up to the three-year mark of COVID and COVID lockdowns. Think about that. Three years later, people have gotten used to working the way they're working. Why should there be any faith that things will get even to some semblance of back to normal? So people are going to sell first, ask questions later, because if things do turn around, there's going to be <laughs> ample time to get back in these names, and that's what we're seeing right now. Yeah. Let's get more on this situation at Blackstone with David Faber, who wow. joins us here on set. I mean, this is CNBC royalty. Roy, not fast, enough. It's like, money. He's, he's, he's on the, what's that big thing with the rocks with the people's heads? Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Mount, he's in it, yeah. of the CNBC. He, Thanks, guys. This better be good stuff, David. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go now. I was just <laughs> walking around in the rain in Midtown and Sandy called, and I'm like, sure, I'm available. Whatever Excellent. you need. So how, how concerning should should this be? You know, I don't know that it's overly concerning. It's not as though there's something nefarious going on mm -hmm. at Blackstone. But it's interesting. You talked about the low rate environment, of course, benefiting the purchase of real estate. But it also benefited the enormous acquisition of assets from people looking for yield. And you guys have mentioned this. You talked about the RIAs who are selling this product as a high-yielding product in a zero-rate environment, right? Four or five percent. Maybe you get some asset appreciation as well. And we were following it. We've been, you know, I've been following it for the last year, year and a half because of the enormous growth. It's been around for six yeah. years, but it was taking in billions a month. And obviously, many investors were looking at Blackstone, looking at the stock and saying, well, you're taking 1.25% off the top of this thing. If you get to $100 billion in assets, and by the way, they were at $70 billion most recently, 
you're talking about over a billion dollars in fee-related income every year. So this is going to hit earnings. What's interesting, Melissa, as well, is their NAV has been higher than the comps. Uh, if you look at the publicly traded REITs, where they've been valuing things, has been higher. They, they do it every month. They, they do the NAV, and they will again. But the expectation is things are going to start to come down. And so those people who are able to get the NAV as it was printed for October, they did well. So many of them wanted out that they hit the 5% limit for the quarter or the 2.5% limit, 2.7% whatever percent limit for the month. And so they've been gated, but they will keep trying to get people out as they can, meeting those redemptions. Yeah, um, no surprise. Uh, Blackstone had a statement, and the spokesperson said that they have ample liquidity. They said something like $8 billion in, in accessible capital. Part of that was um, floating rate loans. And I was wondering what your take on that. When I hear floating rate in a rising rate environment, that to me is a red flag. Um, but how should we think about it's that? It's not clear to me that they're going to have any real liquidity concerns uh -huh. in the sense of meeting the redemptions as is under the agreement. In other words, up to 5% a quarter. Uh, I think you do have to also watch their selling of assets. They did a big deal last week. Right. It's obviously not going to close for a while, that VGMGM grand deal. Mm -hmm. That will take in some money. They will continue to sell some of these assets. It's a lot of rental properties. It's a lot of industrial assets. That, you know, they know what they're doing in real estate, but it doesn't mean they're immune to the marketplace at this point. And so we'll have to wait and see, Guy, what the next marks are on this portfolio. Yeah, it's interesting, but does that have any ramifications for the broader market? I mean, Blackstone put a lot of eggs in this basket without question. For 18 months, it paid off extraordinarily handsomely. I mean, does this now manifest itself in other asset classes? Because to me, this potentially sort of tip of the iceberg type of stuff in terms of what Mel just said, cheap money. People getting out on the risk curve, taking but making bets maybe they shouldn't have made. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I'll leave it to you guys to sort of in terms of the market implications. Certainly, there are investors and those who are perhaps even on top of things more closely, and the RRAs who are as well, who say, "Hey, this is an opportunity for us to get out with uh, with a capital appreciation, and we've been doing well, and redeploy." And obviously, what is only nine months later, or whatever it is from where we started, a much higher rate environment. Um, yes, S REIT, uh, the Starwood REIT, any number of others where you were getting sort of what was promised as a fairly high rate uh, in what was a low rate environment, I think you have to keep an eye on. But the broader implications, I'll leave it to you guys to sort of tell me, because I think it's a good question to be asking, but I don't really know at this point whether it's going to have those. 